Hi, welcome to the bathtub. This is Scott Bradfield, the master bather. We're, we're at the uh, two and a half months or something into the, the coronavirus haircuts thing. This is the exact same haircut I had when I was 17. Exactly the same haircut. And um, we're, uh, we're trying to get back to kind of more normal talks. They're just as disorganized as usual. And I, I have not spent any time planning them, preparing them. Today, I thought we'd do another one of those... Uh, we have a bunch of different types of themes on this. One is, if you like somebody, you might like this person. So this one's called, this one's, uh, if you like John Fonte, and you know who John Fonte is, then you might like Alfred Hayes. It's kind of a cheap comparison, like most of these comparisons, but I see some similarities between John Fonte and, and, and Alfred Hayes. Uh, John Fonte, for those who don't know, he wrote... Um, a number of wonderful novels called the Arturo Bandini novels. And the, the first one he published, I believe, was Ask the Dust, which was a bit, which became kind of famous and celebrated because Bukowski kind of rediscovered Fonte in the 60s because he was one of the writers that Bukowski loved. Fonte kind of created this kind of working class kid living in a crummy, uh, I don't want to say bed sit, but a crummy apartment building in L.A., in Bunker Hill, I believe. And it's about him trying to become a writer. And it's, it's not entirely autobiographical, but it's roughly based on Fonte's own kind of working class uh, origins and his own kind of struggles with learning to write and sending stories off to the magazines and eventually getting published. And they're really lovely books. And it was kind of, again, working class, fairly leftist sensibilities, um, and... In, published in the 30s, I think most of his stuff started coming out in the late 30s. Fonte went, lived in L.A. and he had a film career and he continued writing novels really well up to until he died in the 60s. But these Bandini novels were the ones that he was best, best known for. Slightly autobiographical and set in, in Los Angeles for the most part. Uh, I, I always liked them. They're, they still read well. I don't have any. I seem to have them all on Kindle, so I don't have one to show you. But Fonte's a good writer. and Many of you may know him. And again, if you know Bukowski, you know the kind of more raunchy, you know, raunchy kind of more vomitous version of Fonte. And I always found Fonte, I like them both, but I like Fonte better. Anyway, just a simple way of sort of getting into Alfred Hayes. Alfred Hayes has a much different background from um, Fonte, but some similarities. So he came from, a, he came from Eng England at first. He was born, I think, Shoreditch. He came to New York when he was a young man, when he was like three years old. Uh, he uh, went to, he was in the military. He wrote a couple of novels in, uh, just at the end of World War II. He was in Italy, he was stationed in Italy. And one of the most interesting aspects of Hayes was his connection with the Italian neorealist films. He worked on, uh, and how much he worked on it, I don't know. He worked on that wonderful Vittorio De Sica movie, The Bicycle Thieves, which is just, it's still a great movie. And he worked for uh, some others. I think he wrote Rossellini he worked for. And he published a couple of novels. His novels are very different from the sort of stuff most Americans were writing. Now, you have to remember, it's Dos Passos and Hemingway, and they're all writing the big American novel. And Faulkner was putting Yakna Patafa, the entire county, on the map. And these big, broad, um, uh, world-shaping novels and gigantic Thomas Wolfe books. And, and he wrote very small, controlled, well-written novels and um, the I don't know the early ones as well but they were uh, a couple of more films he got into the film business came to Hollywood and in the course of kind of kind of an unillustrious career he wasn't a you know like a lot of good writers he came to Hollywood and he worked on films but he didn't particularly work on great films and he may not have been a great script writer I don't know if he was or not he seems to have specialized in adapting, again, kind of stuff like him, working class, leftist, leaning, um, kitchen sink melodramas. The, the one he did that I saw, I actually watched uh, before I reviewed Hayes, I, it was called A Hat Full of Rain, which is a 50s message film by Fred Zinnemann, who is not my favorite director. And it's really just everyone's chew they're chewing the everyone's chewing the ceiling. There's no ceiling left. Everyone's chewing the ceiling all through this movie. It's about drug addiction and and a marriage falling apart. And he also worked in a really interesting movie called Clash by Night, which is based on Clifford Odets. You sort of see the connection with Clifford Odets. 
um, un, un, uninspiring films for the most part. Not, I, I think the Fritz Lang version of Clash by Night is a good, interesting movie, but not necessarily because of the script. In the course of that, he continued. He was a poet. He wrote a lot of poetry. He wrote a, a, he wrote a poem called Joe Hill, which became a big protest song when I was a kid in the 60s. And he wrote these three very, very slim, s strong novels. In Love, My Face for the World to See, is sort of set in Hollywood when he was working in Hollywood. And it takes place from Malibu to Belmont racetrack and so forth. And then the most recent one, that just these have all been come out from uh, New York Review of Books, who also all kind of specialize in bringing back writers who are sort of unfairly forgotten. The newest is The End of Me, which is about a screenwriter who goes back to New York where he was born and tries to kind of get back to reality after living in, in a very unreal, sometimes unreal feeling place like, like Southern California. Um, they're, they, they're very introspective novels. They're different from Fonte in that they're a little bit more stream of consciousness. They're a little bit more, they're more subjective novel, uh, novels. And they're a little more self-absolved, self-involved, I would say, than Fonte. But the similarities are that they were both sort of writing these books that were not the um, not the sort of stuff that people wanted were being celebrated. You know, not they weren't these big America, sh declamatory American novels, big embraces, big themes, big ideas. They really focus on these individual lives and individual. Uh, emotions of characters who were quite like the author who wrote them. Both of them went through fairly fairly long eclipses in the 60s and 70s, Fonte and, and as well as, as Hayes. And Fonte was only really rediscovered because of Bukowski's love for him and Bukowski getting his publishers. And basically, uh, he was, Bukowski did a, a good job promoting Fonte, who deserved it. And Hayes never really quite got that attention, but this new set of books, which are being packaged sort of as a trilogy, they're not really, they're three different novels set in different times, but the character who writes, the sensibility of the narrator, they're both first per, all first-person novels. Uh, the first two books, the character doesn't even have a name, but the sensibilities are all fairly closely, you would think, aligned with Alfred Hayes, the, the novelist. So anyway, just a brief little talk. I'll put, I'll put a link to my piece on the, uh, the LA Times about these books, which I've enjoyed reading. And uh, they make me want to go back to read John Fonte, who I always, I always loved. He's sort of a, the, he's sort of the writer, the, the romantic writer that you always want to read about. The guy who's, you know, he inspired a lot of us when we were kids, to, when we read him. Or, or gave us the courage to go on. Maybe that's the other thing. Anyway, there's there's a guy, Alfred Hayes. You look him out, check him all out with New York Review of Books. And we'll be back next week, hopefully with a, a whole new haircut. Um, I'm not letting Lucky in again. It was a disaster last time with her. And uh, we'll see you soon. Okay, happy, happy bathing.